Space. The final frontier. These are the voyages of the United Earth, and later the United Federation of Planets. Our continuing mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Stellaris Star Trek Edition. This is Star Trek New Horizons. And we are playing as United Earth. So, quick word about this mod, in case you didn't know what it's all about and how it plays. New Horizons is a overhaul mod for Stellaris, uh, which allows you to pick any of the um, 60 or so, 50 or so, I don't exactly know the, the, the precise number of races available, but one of the many races present within the Star Trek universe, both the original series, uh, The Next Generation, Voyager, DS9, um, and I think even a couple of the races from some newer movies are included as well in this mod. So, yeah, everything that's considered lore and within the, um, I guess, basic main universe uh, is present, along with the Mirrorverse. Um, from, for example, that one Voyager episode into the Mirror Darkly. Um, so, yeah, it's a huge mod. It's an absolutely massive mod. Most of the species have either unique events, unique mechanics, unique ship sets, or um, all of the above, right? Um, and there's a ton of information about the mod. You can go and, and, and check it out on the um, Steam page. Uh, to go in-depth in and, and review it right now and to, to cover everything that it has would be, well, pretty much insane. Um, but what I will say is that you do start off on a static, law-friendly galaxy. That means none of this is randomly generated. Uh, the Klingons will be where they're supposed to be in the galaxy chart, uh, the Romulans where they're supposed to be, etc, etc. Everyone has predetermined starting positions. Um, you can turn that option off and have everyone scatter randomly, but why play a Star Trek mod in that case? I think this is, uh, this is a lot more fun, and the map we'll be playing on is the Alpha and Beta Quadrants. And I'm going to be focusing on the birth of the civil, uh, or the sorry, the birth of the Federation. Um, so let us begin. So to start off with, we have excellent relations with the Vulcan High Command. Obviously, we can uh, negotiate a non-aggression pact with them, I suppose, and we also have uh, communications with the Tellarites. So, they're also pretty friendly toward us, they're cordial currently, and these are the first two... Whoops, I did not mean to click that. These are the first two um, empires that we're going to try and... Well, empires. Um, doesn't really hold for Star Trek and, and for these two, but these are the first two, I guess, um, civilizations that we will try and incorporate into a federation and start from there. Uh, I did think about playing on a massive uh, two to 3,000 stars galaxy, um, and that would be very fun. Um, they're also very lore accurate, that they're, they're awesome and everything. And yeah, like I said, it would be fun, but it would be unwatchable. Uh, it's not unplayable on my PC. A 2000 Star Galaxy I have ran with uh, the Borg, I think, the Undine, the Undine or the Undine, depending on who pronounce it, uh, which way. Um, Vanguard, and I think I played it with the Dominion as well. Yeah, I played a, I played a 2000 game with the Dominion too. Um, and it's slow. It's stupidly slow. Um, when you're on speed 3, it feels like you're on speed... Well, it feels like a, bit, a little bit like this. It feels like you're playing on slow when you're on speed 3 on a 2000 star uh, galaxy. Which, like I said, is a little bit of a problem. Um, not necessarily right now at the start, but later down the line, yeah. Um, and I think far more importantly, it's unwatchable. Um, I don't have a problem playing it necessarily. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's okay, it's not bad, but for a viewing experience, it's terrible. So I decided to keep it to the Alpha and Beta Quadrant, um... Map, so it's, I think it's 800 stars, so slightly smaller than the um, maximum size map of Vanilla Stellaris, which 
still should be big enough. We're going to meet the Romulans, the Klingons, we're going to have wars with them, probably. Um, we're going to meet, you know, all sorts of fun, strange new worlds and civilizations and whatnot. Uh, it will be quite the adventure. So, I will roleplay this as much as possible. Um, I will not try and game the system or anything. I will play pretty much like the civil, uh, like the, um, I keep wanting to say civilization, like the Federation would, uh, and, and rather did, in the lore, at least for the most part. We might have to make some changes here and there, but mostly it will be um, lore-friendly, let's say. Uh, let's, of course, increase speed too fast while we get trucking along. And now, as I play through the mod, I will show you the different mechanics, I will show you the different um, uh, innovations, the, the changes, the new resources and everything. Uh, I just think that if I were to do it right now at the beginning, it would be a bit too much because the mod is absolutely massive. Uh, but fear not, I will take you through it one step at a time and um, the amount of changes can feel very overwhelming at first. Because uh, you take a look at, for example, the number of unique resources and you realize, holy hell, there's all of that. There's actually more than, than this amount. Um, these are the basic ones. I think you, you, Do we have a Trillium D here? Yes, we do. There might be like a couple more added to this, but it's pretty out there. Um, trained Officers is another one. Dilithium is another one. This is Naval Capacity. Um, and so on and so forth. I just realized I have the wrong UI installed for this. I'm going to have to change that next episode. Um, but it's fine. The basic, basically, the UI is fairly similar for all the different races. Uh, it is a separate mod you need to activate if you want. If you don't want the, the default UI. I think this is the Dominion one, um, which I think is pretty darn cool with its colors and everything. Um, the only unique element is this. It has Jem'Hadar ships here instead of um, Federation ships. But... Yeah, I'm going to change it. It doesn't, doesn't look very Federation-y to me, but we can keep it for the first episode. Um, all right. So this is your standard first contact with uh, alien races. Uh, I'm going to assign another envoy to Alpha Centauri, and, or rather the contact we found there, and let's go ahead and continue building stuff over here. For now, we need minerals mostly. So let's get some going right there, and here it is. We have our first custom event. There is a billion different events, all catered towards each um, race that you play. So, for example, the Borg will not get the NX project because they didn't have the NX project. Uh, they will have all sorts of assimilation events and so on and so forth. But for the um, Federation, it's these. Uh, and also the, the way you respond to different uh, anomalies and stuff is also uh, dependent on what kind of... Um, race you're playing so yeah it's it's i mean it's it's a beautiful beautiful wonderful mod um and i cannot recommend it enough it is i mean i think pretty much it is the mod for me um in terms of stellaris and the fact that you can um sort of switch around between a static law friendly galaxy where every spawn is predetermined to a randomized one i think even you know just just adds to the value oh so much um Okay, so let's let's take a look at the actual game and let's start playing it. And as things move along, I will I will explain them. Uh, what I will say though, before we, we continue, one more thing, just one tiny more one tiny little addition. Um, for me, the number of unique resources was extremely overwhelming at first. You go through one game, let's say a dozen or so hours maybe, and you will master this without any problem. You will know what depends on what. You will also realize that a lot of these things like. Minor artifacts, uh, Ketrasol White, Time Crystals, um, uh, Water Ice even, um, Latinum, Dilithium, Train Crew, stuff like that, is very simple to manage. Some of these things you can completely ignore. Uh, for example, as the Federation, I will not need Ketrasol White ever. Um, this is a resource purely for the Dominion uh, and the Jem'Hadar soldiers. Nobody else uses this, so you know you can take it off the list. Um, and there's, there's, you know, there's different ways of acquiring these resources. It just expands the economy a little bit. Uh, also, sectors no longer provide jobs. Sectors provide bonuses to certain jobs. 
Uh, and of course, the city sector provides the same thing pretty much as, as always, housing and building slots, but again, no um, actual jobs. Each sector takes an upkeep. Some take unique resources, some take energy, some take minerals. Um, for example, this one takes ice. This one takes, uh, what's it actually called? Uh, deuterium. This one takes jewelry, um, minerals, uh, gas, something. Uh, where is it? Brazine nitrate. There you go. That, that's what it takes. So you, pr you pretty much... Uh, these are unique resources, but they're fairly equal to minerals and food and supplies and everything. So, yeah, you just need to keep that in mind here. Okay, so we do have one uh, open job here for a technician, which will produce energy and crew for the cost of food. So we can keep that there. Luna is a fledgling colony uh, with four available job slots for miners and doctors. So we don't need to be building anything there currently. We need to save up on minerals to get these stations up. Um, and Mars is also a colony which starts off with a unique building called a life support dome, which increases habitability on Mars by 50%, making it a total of 60. Uh, now, Mars does not have any uh, buildings currently on it so let's provide them with some i think we should make them a hydrophonics dome or a fusion reactor what are we going to need more probably the fusion reactor i would say for ship upkeeps and, and stuff supplies we just need to keep in the positive we don't need extra these two we do need extra though so let's keep that in mind okay uh, our planets are done. Are they assigned to a sector and a governor? Yes, they are. All right, lovely. And now, the NX project. It's been a long road. Two years after the successful test flight of NX Zeta Earth is celebrating, or sorry, NX Zeta, there should be a comma in there, Earth is celebrating laying the keel for the very first Warp 5 vessel, Starfleet's first true flagship, the NX Light Cruiser Class Enterprise. Yes, the first Enterprise. But while technology has progressed at a breakneck speed, realizing the dreams of scientists such as Archer, Tsaki, and Kachrane, I forgot it's been years since I've seen um, Star Trek Enterprise. The Vulcans continue to warn humanity that uh, to warm <laughs> to warn humanity that it is not ready for the perils that face them in deep space, uh, and pretty much as the Federation did in uh, the the TV show, we will say sod the Vulcans and we will accelerate the project. Uh, so a new Enterprise in thirty days, and there we go. Okay, abnormal conditions. Uh, da, 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 da. We'll show you across some. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, go away, Q. Uh, we don't need you or your mineral. There you go. Q, Q can can go away because uh, well, we don't need him. Okay, getting from there to here. <laughs> uh, you gotta notice that this the 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 titles of the events are the lyrics to the opening of uh, to the opening song of. Star Trek Enterprise, the prequel series, um, the founding of the Federation series, basically. So, uh, uh, the, uh, with Earth's first Warp 5 vessel complete and ready to depart her maiden, on her maiden voyage, it is now time for us to appoint a captain. Two outstanding candidates exist. Jonathan Archer, son of renowned scientist and key member of the Warp 5 project, Henry Archer, and A.G. Robinson. Famed test pilot and first human to break Warp 2 barrier. Well, I kind of really want Robinson on this one, because... Yeah, let's go with Robinson. We're going to go with Robinson on this one. Well, actually, here's the thing. Um, the game allows us to do both with the new uh, Admiral system. If there is an outstanding individual, such as... Uh, Admiral Robinson, who is not here... Cadet A.G. Robinson and Captain Jonathan Archer.
Did it put A.G. Robinson somewhere else, as a general, maybe, or uh, something? It might have. Ah, yeah, so here's what it did. Um, it made him a scientist, and it made uh, the other one... That's the other one. It made Archer an admiral. Okay, that's interesting. Um, yeah, so Heroic Admiral, Scout, and Roma. Heroic Admiral, that's actually going to be useful for the um, for the Enterprise. But enough clicking around, let's actually go and see the bloody thing. Where is it? You might want to actually turn on the UI until you can find the, the, the actual ship juggernaut. Yes, 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 I know. Ah, here it is. Okay. I love how small the ships are. Um, very realistic, and they're kind of hard to spot, fair enough. Um, but I really like how small the ships are. One thing I do prefer uh, in a slightly different Star Trek overhaul-oriented mod uh, are the graphics. Uh, they made systems way bigger in, uh, in, a, in a different Star Trek mod that I won't talk about and won't cover right now. I might make a separate video on it. Um, but I don't like the economy of that mod. They've, they've completely mucked it up. Uh, they made it so that trained officers are the most precious commodity, and you use trained officers to build literally everything, so your entire economy now revolves around them, and they're really hard to get. Um, so it's an artificial way of slowing the game down. You need to, you need artificial, uh, officers, oh, artificial. You need trained officers to build even the, the most basic mining equipment, uh, and stations like this, which, yeah, fair enough, it might be realistic, but at the same time, it's kind of game-breakingly bad, because um, it, it's just way too slow, and the AI doesn't need this resource. You do. Yeah. Like I said, not ideal. Um, but for now, though, uh, whoops. Let's take a look at her. There she is. The first Enterprise, chronologically speaking. Um, and we're going to take her out on her maiden voyage, first to Ross 248. Uh, now, there was one more option for me when starting this... Uh, shall we go with archaeology on the next scientist? I think so. There was one more option for me when starting this playthrough, in terms of the choice of map. There is all four quadrants on a 1,600 map, uh, or 1,600 sectors. No, try again, Juggernaut. 1,600 systems. There we go. Uh, map. It's nice, don't get me wrong, um, but I'm not the biggest fan of it. Here's the thing, uh, the, the, the real problem there is it makes all the other sec uh, I mean, all the sectors slightly smaller. So if you were to play on a alpha and beta, um, alpha and beta quadrant rather, uh, map, those quadrants would be huge and they would be very accurate and you would have all sorts of systems. Uh, if you were to play all four quadrants on a 1,600 um, systems map, then you would have to miss out on some of the systems, and everything would be a bit smaller. The map would be bigger, but the individual quadrants would be smaller. I didn't like that. Um, I think this is much more fun for a for the start of the game, which usually tends to be the most entertaining part of Stellaris, anyway. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, that's that's why I'm why I've decided to go with uh, this. Now, what do I currently need? Uh, I have plenty of ice, so let's get a mining station around the sun. Which sounds pretty badass, if, if, if I'm honest. And, uh, yeah, let's go... We need these resources, like, as soon as possible. Okay, communication established. Hmm, with the, uh, well... Let's not spoil it. We'll uh, we'll see when we get there. But I know who they are. Uh, Monastery on Pajem. We're going to do this, but let me just uh, keep that here for a second. 
what I really like about the uh, the uh, Federation first and foremost is that the NX class um, flagships, I suppose, the the Enterprises and the Voyagers and all your other uh, main TV show uh, ships. They are science vessels, first and foremost, so their job is to survey and make contact and stuff, but the science vessels with photonic torpedoes, shuttle pod wings, light pulse phaser cannons, and medium photo photonic torpedoes. This is not a ship to, to mess around with, right? I mean, sure, weapons range and weapon damage is a little bit decreased, and yeah, it's a prototype explorer, length, mass, etc., etc. So you, you get all these different stats, which are not really relevant, but... It's a decent ship, and if you, uh, I mean, its state is by default passive, which means it will fight. And boy, will it fight. I mean, that one ship could wreck four of these Emmet-class um, frigates. Yeah, they're, 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 I suppose they're technically frigates. Because they have tier one uh, light pulse cannons and light nuclear torpedoes. This is nothing. Like, the, the Enterprise would swallow four of these up for breakfast. And this is what most races start off with. So it is a science vessel, but it can defend itself um, very, very well. So I really like that. Uh, most other races do not get this uh, kind of ship. For most other races, the only science vessel they get is something like this, which has no weapons whatsoever. Uh, it's a Franklin-class science ship, right? They would get some other class of science ship, but it would be basically the same template. Um, so, the, for the Federation, this is amazing. Uh, Alright, now, Monastery on Pajem. The Vulcan Holy World of Pajem appears to many on Earth to be a, a paradox. The Vulcan people claim it to be innately logical, eschewing, supersti uh, sorry, eschewing superstitions. However, at the heart of their culture are a number of rituals and beliefs that are distinctly religious in nature. By displacing a... Um, sorry, by dispatching... Not displacing... By dispatching a cultural mission to the Holy World of Pajem, we may be able to understand our neighbors better. Dispatch a cultural mission, a special project to visit Vulcan Holy World. And we shall do that, and it's very easy to do. We just need one science ship there. Now, how much time do I have to do this? It's 1,700 days. Okay, that is a while. Let's survey this, survey this, and then... I just reckon we can do it like that. And have the Enterprise go to Pajem because that, you know, uh, main character vibes, basically. <laughs> no, let's, let's say because we need these ships to survey um, out here towards... Well, the Galactic Core would be somewhere over here, but you get the idea. Uh, in, in that general direction. And uh, yeah, lo and behold, we found the Romulans. Already. Yeah. Not ideal, but fine. Let's get a research station, I think. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to leave that be for now uh, until our scientist gets a little bit better at his job. Leave that be again. Okay, contact established with CAF aliens. Our diplomatic teams have established, have established contact. Uh, all right. 42 Unity, and Intel set to 20. Okay, where are they? Uh, that's done. Technolog uh, technological research completed. Diplomacy or slavery, the Divergent Path, Economics or Heritage Museum. Uh, let's start with our Economic Path. Now, I also just realized, I think, that my sound is muted. Much better. There we go. Uh, it does have some Star Trek sounds in it, so... Yeah, listen to that. Beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. Okay, uh, there are some primitives here, aren't there? In Alpha Centauri. Aha! Yeah, here they are. Uh... Pre-warp cultures has not yet left not yet left their home world and developed FTL capabilities. And whilst their potential is limited right now, they need to pro they need to progress on their own. 
journey towards leaving their own planet and beyond if they are to ever to be influential in the wider galaxy. Who are these people? I do not remember the actual race. Maybe if I see the portrait, I'll remember. Contacts. Yeah, I, ah, here they are. No, still don't look uh, familiar. Fragmented nation states. Yeah, okay. Uh, you know, prime directive and all. I guess that's uh, that's very important. Um, systems like these are my absolute favourite. So there's Proxima Centauri over here, and then miles away from it is Alpha Centauri A, and then Alpha Centauri B. It's like two separate systems next to each other. In Vanilla Stellaris, this would be one sector, this would be another, that would be a third. Here, you have them all in the same map, like this. Um, I, I think this is wonderful, I think this is genius, and I wish Stellaris, Vanilla Stellaris did this slightly more often. It does have binary and trinary systems, but it tends to bunch them all up, like put one star here, one star there, and then you know a couple of plants around. Um, this, like, has space, and this space is actually very important in combat as well, and uh, in exploration and in tactics and all those things. Um, so yeah, uh, the, the, there's a different mod that does this a little bit more, and the maps are a lot more fun, but like I said, the economy of that mod um, is a little bit An alien empire is making not ideal, let's say. So... We shall seek friendly relations with the Andorian Empire. Of course we shall. They are a constitutional empire. And let's open up communications with them. And one of the wonderful things about being... Um... It's always good to have allies or enemies. Yeah, sure. Uh, if you say so. One of the beautiful things about being the Federation... Initiating communication. Is that uh, much like in the... Well, in the TV show they had some issues with the Andorians at first. I didn't really trust them. There were some shots fired here and there. Um, but good to have here, in the grand scheme of things, um, we're going to spend a little bit of influence and we're going to get on their good side very early on, which is something the Vulcans can't do. They start off with fairly bad relations with the Andorians, and uh, it's up to the humans to unify the two conflicted races and form a federation, which is exactly what happened. Uh, and which is what I'm going to try and do here as well. Uh, deuterium imports collection and enricher. That's actually not... Uh, I think I have plenty, don't I? Yeah, I have plenty just from collecting it from um, natural resources. Okay, let's go with a optical computer, which will lead down the computer path, and we uh, shall hopefully improve our research like that. Now, something I haven't mentioned yet, because we haven't really gotten to it, uh, but we shall very soon, is that my absolute favourite part of this mod, like, the one thing I like the most, and you can take away everything else, but the one thing I would, uh, you know, really like to keep <laughs> if you know if you if you do away with everything else if you let if you, if you gave me a choice to keep one thing from the mod and then do away with all the other features would be the price of ships let me show you so if we go over to ship designer the most basic and cheapest ship currently is the frigate this is something that we're going to delete and never use the moment we get the upper class of ship which i think is a uh, Destroyer, or a cruiser, or a... I don't know. Ship classes work a little bit differently, and there's more of them in the mod, but we'll see when we get there. Uh, this is terrible, and it costs a pittance. But it still costs 187 um, alloys, 80 crew, and 27 dilithium. It's not... nothing. Soon, though, you're going to see that uh, to make two ships is going to take ages... And it's going to take a lot of resources, which means the life of every single vessel in your fleet and in your empire really matters. Unless you're the Dominion and you have a billion ships, or you're the Borg and you can just rebuild them. But for the most part, they're very, very important. And even for the Borg, losing like a cube or two is bad news. Um, 
or even a sphere or two, which is a uh, way you get those way earlier on. So, Psy aliens, we have uh, made contact with. Let's send someone over to, I guess, start negotiating with them. How are we doing on the project to visit Vulcan? Uh, it's about 750 days away from uh, expiring. I think the Enterprise will make it there on time. We have to have faith in Captain Art. Yeah, not Archer. Robinson, right? Yeah, Captain Robinson. Uh, I will make probably some different choices inadvertently. Uh, okay, hold on. 75? It's 75 here as well. Man, that's expensive if it's 75 on both ends, but it should be. Okay. Mysterious Spacefarers. Alright. We shall see who they are. Uh, we can upgrade these ships, right? For... Yeah, what's the point? We're going to delete them anyway. Most likely, at least. Okay, we will upgrade the Mars Administration building. And everything else is fine. We do have a promising captain. Erica Hernandez. Uh, you get these occasionally, and essentially the only difference between them and regular captains is they start off with more skills. So if we take a look at... We're actually, I'm actually going to get rid of um, Governor Lee Lewis here, because I am paying upkeep for him, and I don't really need to be. Um, for example, we have Jonathan Archer as an admiral. He starts off at level 2, much like Enrique Hernandez, whereas the regular ones start off at level 1. And mostly they start off with uh, a few extra traits. Now I'm going I'm to recruit Jonathan uh, Archer just to keep him in Starfleet. Or uh, was it was it technically still called Starfleet at this point? I don't think it was. I think that's still uh, to become a thing. Planetary survey. Yeah, it's difficult to do. You can do it. Yeah. Well, apologies. Alright, construction completed. Bernard Star, what is this? This is a polar world. It's a pretty small planet as well. I think I don't think we're gonna inherit it. Inherit it? What the hell? I've been playing some CK2, I think, <laughs> recently. I don't think we're gonna inhabit it and, uh, and colonize it just yet. We might want to terraform it later down the line. And get that technology available to us and uh, settle it only then. Okay, new Kaus's Belli that they've gotten against us in Bargo because we now share a border, but that's not going to change anything, I don't think. Or at least not much. Certainly not with the Vulcans, but maybe with the Andorians? No, not really. We still have uh, minus 20 from being a new contact, or minus um, 17 times 3, but that goes away. Uh. And there's a little bit of border friction now, I suppose. Yeah, that's that's fine. It's not going to be a problem. I would... Actually, would I? Yeah, I probably would want... Uh, let's, let's delay that for now. Okay, we will make a human colony on Sirius Prime. And we do have random names for them. Uh, not a lot of country, not a lot of uh, civilizations have randomized names for their planets. But the humans do. Alright, we are going to name our planets. I mean, it wouldn't make much sense to have them all um, bear the name of the, the star they're around. Otherwise, Earth will be called Sol Prime, right? Which it doesn't sound bad, but let's give them a personalized touch. Uh, chi aliens also. Is that over here? No. Where would they be? Well, wherever they are. Send an envoy. And there we go. Ah, Wolf 359. I'm sure nothing bad will happen there whatsoever. At any point in history. Uh-huh. Uh, adaptive Lingua Code Translator. Well, we don't have any other choices, but uh, here's what it does. Basically improves our democracy with... Uh, it's kind of the start of the Universal Translator. Um, 
not up to snuff yet. As you see it in um, the next generation or Voyager or DS9 or anything, but uh, it's something. It's a start. Let's go with science and engineering and uh, hardened fields, command. I mean, you need all of these realistically. Doesn't really matter too much. Do you wonder who this is, though? They're very close by, and uh, they were in Tellarite space until a minute ago. Okay, a little bit of science. Ah, right, yes, I remember these. And we're gonna let you auto survey stuff now. Yeah, I, mean, I guess. Independence is guaranteed by the Vulcan High Command. Okay, thank you very much. The fleet power is overwhelming, which, I mean, it's fine. Uh, do I actually know how powerful their fleet is? No, I don't. I think we can change that. By establishing an active sensor link for 30 years, and I'm going to give you, just to make sure you accept, like, okay, apparently 100 is too much. Give you, like, 50 minerals. This is a favorable, favorable trade deal, and they're going to appreciate that, too. Okay. Uh, also establish contact with the Republic of Axanar. No, I actually don't know where they are. Yeah, there we go. And we can now see the... Um, Ah, oh, the Denobulans. Lovely. They are Denobulans, right? I, I didn't... I'm not completely misremembering everything about Star Trek. I don't think I am. Uh, okay, so Vulcan High Command has the first fleet, which already has its destroyers, the T'Pau class. Yeah, there's going to be a bit of a problem, considering I'm not building up my fleet at all, and I don't really care for army matters. Ever so slightly an issue, like I said, ever so slightly an issue. Let's build a trade depot so we can collect this uh, trade value from Sirius, and uh, yeah, we're just gonna enjoy life. I think is what we're gonna do. Technology discovered. Our low profile signature stealth hull, salt stain afterburner operations. Now let's go polarizing hull. I think. Oh, sorry, polarized hull plating. Even, uh, it's a little bit more important, probably, given our current military situation, or rather, lack thereof, really, if you think about it. Uh, I don't think I can... Can I actually build a star base here? I might be able to. Though, I'm not sure what the Prime Directive would say about that, because I'm technically interfering with them, and that they will see me. But I suppose it is kind of inevitable, and also, one the wonderful thing right now is that the Prime Directive technically doesn't exist yet, so... There you go, and we can build it here as well. Hmm. Well, yeah, I did establish communications with these guys, so I guess... Ha! Okay, where's Enterprise? Did I not make it there on time? I didn't make it there on time! Oh, dear lord in heaven. Okay. That's unfortunate. I was just about to check as well. I was like, am I going to make it there on time? Ouch. Yeah, it turns out they were using the holy site to... Uh, what shall we say? Military pur For military purposes, and uh, it's not...
really, uh... Well, it's not the greatest thing ever. Uh, I think, again, with these traditions, originally in Stellaris you get like two, four, you get eight of them, I think. Here you get four more, so twelve in total. Plus, I think you can unlock one or two later down the line with some factions. I don't think it's the same for the for the Federation, but maybe. I don't, I don't quite know. I haven't played the Federation since, uh, I don't know, this mod was in its early stages of development. Um, which was years ago, so yeah. Uh, I'm going to roleplay with, with this selection as well, even though most of this is um, unique to the faction. Uh, or at least catered and, and suited towards a particular type of faction. So adaptability, for example, for the Undyne and the Borg and the humans are, is a very, very different uh, tree, even though it's technically still called um, adaptability. Section 31 is obviously entirely unique. Uh, and this is espionage and stuff, right? Uh, Nimrod class escort during Discovery Era. Hmm, interesting. Uh, diplomacy, trade agreement, bureau, etc., etc. And then you also have Federation, which is like an extension of diplomacy. Well, not an extension, but like a... It's unique, but it's kind of similar to diplomacy for other factions. So, uh, Federation Bureau of Industrialization. Starfleet Medical, Cultural Exchange, Embassy Protocol, and Federation Merchant Association. Now, what do we get from... Adopting all Federation traditions will grant the following additional perks, such as perk plus one. Nothing more than that. Uh, there's Discovery in this frontier. I think we're going to go with Discovery first. I will roleplay with these as well, and I won't try and pick the best one uh, for the given moment, because uh, honestly, I feel like I don't need to. It's not that important. The game's not that difficult that I have to min-max everything, uh, especially as the Federation, which... Uh, has a difficult start, as you might be aware of, given the Archer um, storyline and, and, and all of that. It's you know it's not particularly easy for him out there, but after that, they get pretty. Uh, I mean, they snowball pretty quickly, right? Because you immediately start integrating and peacefully annexing everything around you. And they don't have much of a choice in the matter, and it's, well, you know, let's just say it tends to get out of hand a little bit. Alright, um, Ice Water, again, not important. Starfleet Intelligence HQ, though, very important, and I guess, yeah, we are technically Starfleet, I guess. Since we have that geothermal power station as well. Okay, good, we've established another, uh... another um, embassy, and I think we're going to call the episode here. It's been around 40 minutes. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Like, subscribe down below if you enjoyed the video, and stay tuned with the rest of the content that I produce on this channel. Until next time, have fun, take care, and bye bye